Hello everyone, welcome back. We're on the hunt again. This time we are in a brand new shop. Never been here and it's actually a new shop overall. They're selling comic books. They're trying to get into that comic book game, but oh man, they're not doing it right. They've got books just up on a wall. They're falling over. There's no backer boards on anything. And wait till you see these prices. Woof. We've got Stormwatch, X-Force, Guardians of the Galaxy. It is a 90s hodgepodge. Your literal worst nightmare when you go hunting. And look at this. Ah, Spawn number nine, first Angela, $20 in about a mid-grade. We got Ma the Max 17 and 16, $20 a piece. Have they ever sold a Max comic book for $20? Here's first profit, 20 bucks. Okay, okay. And then we've got Team Youngblood for $20. You seeing a trend here? I think they just took the sticker gun and just went pop, 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 pop. I mean, are they selling these books? What is going on here? So I'm hunting, I'm digging, hold out hope, but I'm feeling kind of like Kodak Black at this moment where I'm looking at this and I'm like, this can't be it. This can't be it. I mean, you got a big 90s collection. I'm assuming this is from back in the day, this can't be it. Well, I brought a little bit of a trade situation with me. I brought three boxes stuffed to the brim with filler books. Let's see if we did a deal. All right, so pretty interesting little experience there. That was at Family Game Nights. They have a lot of comic books, but like you can see, questionable storage and questionable uh, presentation. I, I like having you know, a lot of books on a wall so you can, you know, see a lot of books at one time, but man, no backer boards, those books being folded up in the corner like that. It's rough, man. So I did kind of a, a trade. I did kind of a donation. So when I brought those three, three boxes in, I mean, they were, they were stacked, stacked to the brim, filler books, just books that are, you know, bulk type books, a lot of image stuff, a lot of the stuff that you saw on that wall was in those boxes. When I got there, when I first got there, they, I, I literally went on their opening day and I was telling them, you know, I, I got these boxes, I'm trying to sell them. Um, you know, I was trying to get literally anything for them. At, I, I would have taken like $10 to be honest. They said that their comic book guy wasn't there and this supposed comic book guy was gonna be able to look at these and decide whether he wanted to buy those or not. And the guy that was there, they said they had a comic book guy there, but just when I started talking to him and started talking shop as far as books and stuff, it was like, I, I don't think, I don't think this guy knows what he's doing. And those prices, I mean, I, I'm just concerned because I, I, I like those guys and I don't want to speak negatively about it. But at the same time, I mean, that's that's kind of like ripping people off. I mean, $20 for that stuff. And I actually did mention it to him. I, I said, guys, I don't, I don't know about these prices. I've never encountered anything like that. Let me know if you guys have ever encountered something that's so egregious like that. And maybe they just don't know any better. I, I don't know. Anyway, I'm looking through that. None, none of the, none of the stuff on the wall was like I mean, you know, if that first Infinity Gauntlet was a 9.8 candidate or that first Angela, you know, I, I would have considered, you know, spending like 20 bucks on those books, but no, not even close. So I go up to the counter and I, I say, do you guys have any other books? And he says, we sure do. And I said, oh, what you got? So he brings out a stack of books, and I, I didn't film this, unfortunately. Deadpool uh, solo series, Deadpool number one. He had that Sabretooth book, uh, Sabretooth number one. He had some like Dark Hawk books, and then he had these that I'm going to show you here in a second. The books, it was like he, he had those pulled aside for potentially grading. So I was, I was like, okay. And I started looking through the prices on this. They had that Sabretooth number one in that little mini series. They had that book for $50. That's a $3 book. So to say, to say the least, it was kind of off-putting. But anyway, I'm sure while you're all here, we got three keys, three books. First one up 
is X-Men number 244. This is the first appearance of Jubilee. Jubilee is a Chinese American character. She shoots fireworks from her fingers. She was very popular on the X-Men animated show. That's, that's how I first came to know her. A lot of potential behind Jubilee. This is my second copy of this book now, and this is a higher grade copy than what I had previously. So, um, this book, I would say, is probably in the eights. There's uh, the corners. Um, I believe it's the bottom left corner is folded with a color break. Yeah, I, I thought it was in good enough condition that I would pick it up, and especially if it's an upgrade to my current copy. Is this a gradable copy? Absolutely not. Okay, this next book, I've never owned this before. This is X-Men Annual number 14. This is the first true appearance of Gambit. So, um, you know, there's a lot of talk and, and, and CGC recognizes X-Men 266 as the first true appearance of Gambit. Well, this is the actual true appearance of Gambit. This book came out before uh, X-Men 266. It also... Um, had, he's named in this book. He's in like 15 panels or something crazy. He speaks. Like this is a first appearance, but it's obvious that X-Men 266 was intended to come out before this book. And chronologically, it is, you know, his real actual first appearance. It's his first cover appearance as well. Uh, good book. This is, this is a pretty high grade book. This is probably in the nines. Um, I, by the way, I pressed all of these books before I brought them up here on camera. Pretty high grade book and it's a newsstand. The first Jubilee was also a newsstand. I was, I was happy this is a square bound book, thicker book. I don't know if, if you guys have ever held, if you ever read this or held it, it's, you know, it's a thicker book. This, this may be it, borderline CGC worthy. I don't know. I'd have to look at the, the prices. Pretty good book. And last but not least, you may have guessed it. X-Men 266, second appearance of Gambit, first cover, but CGC recognizes it as that first appearance. This book is a newsstand. They had little sticky notes on these books, and this book, they said, uh, it said, uh, grade, submit this for grading, question mark. So, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I just explained the differences between the Gambit books. This book's pretty high grade. This is probably in the nines. The, these people, they knew what they had as far as the keys, um, prices. So that's probably the million dollar question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just let you guys guess what they had this priced at and then see if that's comparable to those other books. I'll give you a couple seconds. Okay, so the first Jubilee, they had that priced at $40. For the true first Gambit, in X-Men Annual 14, they had that priced at $50. And then the X-Men 266, they had that priced at $125. I don't see how you could price <laughs> a young blood number two or whatever for, or uh, yeah, young blood number one and blood sport and blood strike and all that. Like you can price that at $20 and had the first gambit at $50. I just, that blows my mind. So I got these books for $175, these three books. Um, so that turned into like a $40 or $50 discount. I basically got either the Jubilee or the, the first gambit for free. I was happy with that, um, especially with you know, giving them the books as far as the bulk books that I kind of traded for, I thought that that was, that was a pretty good deal. I mean, you want to take it like that, you probably say like, you know, I got 50 bucks for that bulk. I'm, I'm cool with that. And they're a new shop. They're, they're trying to get their legs under them. They need product. Maybe they can, maybe that can help them out. I, I don't know. They, I'm worried about them as far as a comic shop goes. But as far as what they're doing with their other things, I, I think they're going to succeed. It's just, man, being a comic shop, you can't exploit people like that. You can't charge $20 for a literal 10 cent image rag comic. Um, it was kind of unsettling, to be honest. What do you guys think? Have you ever seen something like that? Do you think I got a good deal on these three books? Let me know. 
If at any point in time you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, subscribe for more. See ya.